In this video, I'm going to show you how to clean an OLA clock movement. The purpose of this video is to show you how to do this at home without any expensive equipment such as an ultrasonic cleaner or without disassembling the entire movement. Over time, the oil in your clock will dry out and collect dust. I'll walk you through the steps to remove most of the dried out dirty oil. Also, I'll show you how to and where to put the oil, the new fresh oil in. Many movements will stop running or chiming due to the lack of oil or due to the fact that the oil is dried out and dirty. Cleaning and re-oiling your clock's movement is the least expensive and the best thing you could do for your clock. The steps I'll show you are easy and by following the instructions you will add years to the life of your movement or get it up and running again. Once the clock movement is cleaned and re-oiled you will be able to inspect the condition of the movement to see if any further attention is needed. In order to clean and re-oil the movement, you will have to remove the movement from the case. Typically, there's just a few screws that hold the movement on in the case. You'll have to look at your clock real careful to see how your movement will come out of the case, but typically there's just a few screws that hold the movement in. This is a modern day mantle clock, and the movement is held on by several screws in the back of the clock, and I'll show you those in a moment. Before removing the movement from the case, you'll have to remove the hands first. It's always best to set the minute hand to the top of the hour before you remove the hands. When reinstalling the movement, this will save you a lot of time and trouble. Just make sure when you reinstall the minute hand, you reinstall it at the top of the hour. Once the hands are removed, you'll be able to remove the mounting screws that hold the movement in. By removing the hands, it's very simple, by turning this nut and removing the hand, the small nut, I always take just a very small pan or a can or something to put my parts in. So as they come apart, it's very easy not to lose them. Now that we have the hands removed, we'll go ahead and turn the movement around and open the back and I'll show you where some of the screws are. Hopefully you'll be able to see it. But in this one there's two screws on each bracket and there's four brackets. Once we remove those screws from the bracket, that whole movement is going to come out. Now that the movement is removed from the case, we'll be able to clean and oil it. This is not the movement out of that clock I just showed you. I have several of them here just for demonstration purposes only, but this one is relatively clean, but I did want to show you uh, where to oil stuff on this clock. Before we go into any detail, I do want to show you that here's, here's a part of a clock. The way the clock is made, actually, is you got these two brass plates that make up the clock with all the gears going in between. There is a small hole in each side of the plate, front and the back, that holds the tips of the gears. Those small holes is what holds the oil. If you let the oil dry out and get dirty, it becomes an abrasive material and those holes become oblong and the gears don't match up correctly and that's what will stop a clock. So here is a plate that has been disassembled and I will show you if you look closely you'll see all these little holes here and that is where the tips of the gears are sticking through and that is where the oil is going to sit. Here is a clock's movement that will show you where the dirt is starting to build up, build up. and what we're going to do is we're going to remove this dirt I hope you can see that that is just dirty oil that is starting to build up on the clock and as that dirty oil dries out that material is very abrasive and it's very much like a um, graphite material we purchase a small kit from a company that has everything we need to do clean a clock 
out in the field whenever we do go out there and do it. Um, we service over 800 grandfather clocks a year in our shop and typically this is what we do when we go out to a customer's home to clean their clocks. We don't bring the movement in and run it through the ultrasonic cleaner. It's, it's best if we do it out in the field and this is pretty much what we do. We've got these sticks. They're not toothpicks. They look like toothpicks but they're uh, actually called peg wood and what we'll do is get them sharp and start digging the old dirty oil out of the movements and slowly get them out of there. We can typically get most of the oil out, dirty oil out. You're not going to get all of it out. The only way to really get it all out would be to disassemble this movement and hand clean it, run it through the ultrasonic cleaner, hand polish it and then reassemble it. As I said earlier, this video is for the folks that don't have a shop that typically are going to be able to do this at home. And I just wanted to show you real quick. Here is a movement very similar to this one that has been taken apart. And although they go back together very easily, they only go back together one way. And if you don't do it exactly right, the clock's not going to work. So this is your best bet is to go ahead and like I said start getting all this oil out with this peg wood front and back the best you possibly can. Once all that oil is removed, the old dirty oil is removed, then you can start oiling the clock. We noticed that a lot of folks on YouTube and a lot of people we've talked to will show you how to oil these clocks. And we noticed that a lot of these type oilers are sold on the internet. Um, the problem that we have with these type oilers, this one here and another one similar like this, is you really have absolutely no control over how much oil gets in these little oiling spots. You can barely put them in there and they just wad up like that and just come out so thick and heavy. The problem that you have is when you do that and you put the movement back into its spot in the case, that oil will start dripping down that case and eventually within a matter of months it'll all pull out and that oil, you, you, you'll just be running your clock without oil in it again. So that is not the ones that we use. What we'll wind up using is this stuff's great. It's a uh, horse Whitlock's premium quality synthetic clock oil. Uh, we've been using it for years. It has been tested on thousands and thousands of clocks over so many years. And uh, we typically will do about 800 grandfather clocks a year out in the field. Um, we've been doing it for 10 or 11 years. So there's quite a few clocks that we have out there. And uh, they're all, 90% uh, of them we get running up there in the in the uh, person's homes sometimes they'll be so worn out that we'll have to replace the movement or rebuild them but typically we can get them up and going so when we re-oil these these all these oiling spots is what we want to go ahead and put some oil into so what I've done is I've just taken a small amount of the oil and put it into a cap and all I'm gonna do is get a little bit of oil on the end of this oiling pin and just touch it to each one of those. It does not take much. We just want to get a little bit of oil in there. This oil, like I said, is wonderful oil. It goes a long way because of the fact that it's synthetic. It does not dry out as quick. It does not collect dust as much and it's just great we we buy these we buy the oil by itself but at first when we started buying it we were buying it in these little kits and the kits come with well, actually there's four of these oil pins that it comes with it comes with the oil itself it comes with a cap to put the oil in and it comes with one of these peg woods to dig all the dirty oil out and like I said, this oil has been around for years. It has been wonderful. It's been well tested and we use it. I'll, I'll actually put a link 
on the bottom of our uh, of this video to show you where you can get it. And like I said, they they'll sell it either in the bottle by itself or in the uh, kit form. When you get into some of these mechanical parts here, you want to get a little oil dropped in there. Sometimes you can go on the inside, but I'd be very careful because, again, the oil will start dripping out and uh, you'll wind up running the clock dry. There are two places on this particular clock that are a little odd, and they are right here where the balance wheel goes. So you want to remove, just take your screwdriver, move that up drop a little bit of oil in there and then put it back into its place you could see that we're using very little oil so this is like a quarter ounce some fluid ounce or so it, it'll it'll go for hundreds of clocks I mean it's just amazing how many clocks we can get out of this anyways that's basically it that's what you go ahead and, and oil up after it's clean and oiled and we'll go ahead and reinstall it back into the clock and get things adjusted and your clock should start running again once you get the clock movement back into the clock if it does not run it's very possible that some of the bushings are worn out you can sometimes wiggle the gears back and forth to try to see on this clock it's quite hard to see if they're uh, worn out some of the older ones you might be able to see a little easier I can see one that's right here I don't know if it's coming out on the video or not um, this one right here has got a little bit of a wiggle to it and that's very possibly gonna stop this clock from chiming um, but we'll put it back in the case and, and see what happens